Good morning and welcome to Kid News. I'm Tori. Today is Thursday, March 19th, 2020. And we begin with the earliest first day of spring to hit the calendar in 124 years. The vernal equinox usually falls on either March 20th or 21st, based on a complicated equation of leap years, centuries, and the length of time it takes Earth to revolve around the sun. This year, all those factors added up to spring arriving at 11.49 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, or just before midnight tonight. So other than a fancy way of saying spring, what exactly does vernal equinox mean? It's Latin. Vernal means fresh or new, and equinox means equal, and is used to mark the moment when the Earth's tilt is such that the sun shines directly on the equator, making the lengths of day and night nearly the same. For those of you living in the Southern Hemisphere, it's opposite day, with today marking the start of your fall or autumnal equinox. Get comfortable. That's the message Governor Gavin Newsom is delivering to 6 million kids in California. Yesterday, he warned parents that students in grades K to 12 could be out of the classroom until the fall. Nearly 99% of the state's public schools are closed, and the governor, who has three young children of his own, has shared his own family's frustration with the new normal. Earlier this week, Kansas became the first state to officially order schools closed through June, but it will likely not be the last. According to Education Week, 39 states have closed schools, at least temporarily, meaning nearly 40 million kids in the U.S. are now homeschooling. Wash your hands. Those three little but very important words are ones you're no doubt hearing again and again. Now, health experts are adding another three. Wash your phone. And if you don't yet have one, then wash your tablet, computer, or any device that gets used a lot. The Centers for Disease Control has classified these gadgets as high-touch surfaces. And with more and more students online at home, it's extra important to keep them clean. Now, as any tech-savvy kid knows, this doesn't mean dunking your device in a bowl of soapy water. Apple recommends gently cleansing screens and keyboards with wipes containing 70% alcohol, being careful to avoid getting moisture in any openings, and whatever you do, do not use bleach. Reassessing, but not dropping out. That's the official word out of Senator Bernie Sanders' camp after he lost all three of Tuesday's primaries. Rumors that the Vermont senator would quit the race intensified yesterday as the campaign canceled ads on Facebook and Google. Mr. Sanders is so far behind former Vice President Joe Biden in delegates that a come-from-behind nomination win is nearly impossible. In the meantime, both campaigns have canceled all of their public appearances and events for the near future. On the Republican side, it should come as no surprise that as of Tuesday, President Trump officially had clinched his party's nomination for the November 3rd general election. A 20-year-old Yale student unexpectedly home from school came up with a bright idea in a very short amount of time. In under 72 hours, Liam Elkind recruited 1,300 volunteers to help the elderly during the COVID crisis. Their organization, Invisible Hands. Their mission, to deliver groceries and other essentials to the homebound. Visitors to their website, invisiblehandsdeliver.com, can either request a delivery or sign up to help. In addition to providing food and medicine, there's an important side benefit as well, a human connection delivered at a safe distance. Right now, the service is available in limited areas in New York City and New Jersey, but they're hoping to expand. And that's it for Kid News. Now, our Kid News Quiz. Why is the CDC recommending that we clean our phones? because we touch them a lot. California's governor says kids might be out of school until when? Next fall. What's the name of the new organization helping homebound seniors? Invisible Hands. What happens at 11.49 p.m. Eastern Standard Time tonight?
spring makes its earliest arrival in 124 years. In One for the Road, an equinox myth busted. Every year on this day, somebody somewhere tries to stand an egg on its end. It's long been rumored that when the moon and the sun are positioned equidistant from the Earth, gravity's pull is equalized and an egg will have a better chance of standing up. Not true, say our friends at Scholastic. It's the position of the yoke that matters, not the Earth. That doesn't mean you shouldn't give it a try. It just takes the right egg, a little practice, and a lot of patience. Before we go, we have quite a few birthday shout-outs today. Gavin in Kalamazoo, Michigan, Kyle in Castro Valley, California, Gwen in Melbourne, Iowa, Emma and Danny in St. Paul, Minnesota, Nicholas in Newton, Massachusetts, Alan in Maidens, Virginia, Grady in Raleigh, North Carolina, Trevor and Tyler in Amsterdam, New York, Cody in Prattville, Alabama, and Elise in Bethesda, Maryland. We'd also like to say hello to Mrs. Rusk's fifth graders at Hawthorne Elementary North in Vernon Hill, Illinois, Ms. McDonald's sixth graders at Portland Estates in Dartmouth, Nova Scotia, and Mrs. Hart's fourth and fifth graders at Myler Street in Los Angeles, California. Thanks for listening, everyone. We hope you tune in for more kid news tomorrow morning.